Right, so uh, I want to make a quick video. I think I said in the last couple of videos that I wouldn't be making any more, but here I am. There's been a couple improvements made, and uh, long story short, in the last video, the old harness was still in here alongside the new, and I was having a problem seeing how I could maintain some gauge functionality like the oil pressure gauge, the water temperature, and tachometer. Uh, because the DME harness had those runs in it to complete that, even though it had anything to do with Motronic or anything. So uh, all I did was I just took the sensors, attached uh, wiring to them, and then ran that wire up here through this connector, which interfaces the harness with the rest of the car. I wanted to take a quick video before I finished, uh, you know, closing it up with this conduit stuff. So anyway, these are pretty much the connectors or connections for like the oil pressure, water temperature. Now this green wire is the tack wire from Megasquirt. And it doesn't really make any sense because uh, if you look at the diagram for this connector, it's uh, the tack wire. Sorry, not the tack wire, the coil wire. And if you look on this side, this thick green wire, that goes to the coil. That's actually the ground. DME would pulse this pin um, to fire the coil. And that would go to the coil and that's how the coil fired. Uh, this would go to pin 1 on the DME normally, but instead I put the Megasquare tack wire through here because the second wire that comes out goes to the tack, and the factory tack actually looks at that uh, grounding signal from the DME to determine how fast the engine's spinning, so uh, that works well. I'm going to just close all that up in a couple minutes and see the other wiring changes. I finally cleaned up all this over here. The coil is out. Um, and then I just have a connector here. This is the factory harness for the coil. There would be two wires, that thicker green wire I showed you, as well as a black wire. The black wire you would think would be ground, but it's actually the power wire. And that goes through to this, this wire here, which goes to the main relay, so that whenever I turn the ignition switch, the main relay gets power. And the reason I used a connector was because, uh, I can just change this side, so I can unplug this, and then I have another connector on this side that has the uh, part of this harness that I cut off. So if I ever want to go back to the normal coil, all I have to do is take the other connector, which is in the garage somewhere, and it has two rings on it, which obviously go onto the coil terminals. So Just so uh, I'm not totally out of options if I ever have to go back. So I think that's about it for under the hood, but I'll show you. There's one last kind of detail. It is so mind-numbingly hot outside. Like my phone will actually shut off in a couple of minutes because it'll say that it's overheating, but I'll, so I'll try and be quick. The last thing is this wire here. Uh, it's temporary until I wire it in, tuck it behind the cluster, the whatever, the, the pods here. All this is is 12 volts from the relay board I made that goes into this connector here. Now this is what the DME's uh, little, you know, uh, on an early car the DME harness is down here. There's a little thing that comes off of it and there's a solid black wire on the right, which is what this goes to, that's 12 volts, and a yellow and black wire on the left, which a lot of like the FR Wilkes or whatever, like DME pin assignment charts will say it's tachometer. It's really for this economy gauge up here, and the tachometer signal, like I said before, is that green wire. So this will start up. This is going to be a cold start, just to show the tax working. Just going to leave the clutch in, but... Still working on tuning the cranking pulses to get that uh, number of starter turns down to a minimum. Uh, but it runs great. This is still adjusting, but... Yeah, so it's a cold start, and the car idles solid, the tachometer works. This is uh, pretty accurate when I look at the Tuner Studio RPM output. It pretty much matches up with what the tech says. So that's good at least. That's about it.